Hi. In this tutorial, we'll be taking a look at the new nodes, Udem value, as well as jitter color. Let's start off with the Udem value node. You can find this both in the layer stack and the node graph under the geometry nodes extension pack Udem value. And let's view this node. And you can see my object here, which consists of multiple Udems, has all these random shades assigned to it. In the node properties of the node, the default output type is the random Udem value 0 to 1, meaning a random value between 0 and 1 is assigned to each Udem. You can also choose a random Udem color or the Udem number. If you choose the Udem number, the Udem number of the patches are output as intensity values. If I go to my color picker, make sure I'm in HDR mode down here in the bottom, use the pick raw pixels and click on an area, I will get the corresponding Udem number I clicked on in the intensity value. One usage case for this would be, for example, to make a Udem range mask. Let's create a set range node, hook this up and view the node. And now in the node properties of the set range node, I could enter a old min and max corresponding to a Udem range I want a mask for. So let's say, for example, 1013 to 1014. So now I have these two Udems isolated as a mask. If I want to have a wider range, you will start noticing things will start to get a little bit of gray because we're still remapping the old min and old max between 0 and 1, meaning I would inherit some values between 0 and 1 uh, for the different UDIMs. So in this case, simply just increase the multiply scale and you will get a solid value. Just in this case, you probably want to clamp the output just to have a purely black and white. So 0 or 1 value instead of a value that goes over 1. Let's take a look at another usage case of the UDIM value node. I'm going to switch the node back to the default random UDIM value. And let me reset everything in here in the set range node. And I'm going to make a cloud extended node, which is one of the extension pack procedurals. Let me plug the set range into the size and view the cloud node. And now I can set a custom size for each UDIM for the cloud node. So for example, let me set this to 0.4 and for example 0.8. So I'll have quite differently sized uh, procedural effects depending on the UDIM. Other usage cases for this could be, for example, to change the tiling of an image on a per UDIM basis, to change rotation of images on a, on a UDIM basis. Um, pretty much anything you could map, you can change this way on a per UDIM basis with sort of a random value to it. Next up, let's look at the Jitter Color node. The Jitter Color node is an adjustment layer node. However, other than other adjustment layers instead of Mari, this one really works only if used in the node graph. So I'm going to hook this up to my color first and view the output. By default, the node will not make any changes to your color. So let's take a look at its node properties. We have all these sliders for saturation, U and gain offsets. Let's make a change to the saturation offset. We're getting a very global saturation change, so not really a randomization the way we're after. The reason for this is because we're missing a jitter signal. The jitter signal you have to attach on the node itself here at the bottom. Let's create a cloud node and see what we're getting. With the cloud node attached, we now see a visible effect when we change the U and gain or the saturation. The default behavior of the jitter color node will use the jitter signal purely as a mixing value. So a black value in your signal will correspond to any minimum value and a white value will correspond to a maximum value. So this is in theory something you could have achieved using a merge node and a couple of HSV nodes. Let's take a look at the use cell noise function in the jitter node. A cell noise function is basically a noise that is being applied to the jitter signal and it'll generate larger value chunks. So if I take this on, in this case, we're probably getting a very weird looking result. Let me scale up the cloud. So you can see all the fine noise from the cloud got removed and got replaced with these weird looking solid color bands. The cell noise really works best if you already have a very flat value supplied. So for example, if you generate a material ID mask, an object ID mask, or as we've seen before, the UDIM value node actually generates very nice flat values on a per UDIM basis. So let's try it with this one. So now we have very pronounced changes based on a per UDIM value. With the use cell noise turned on, the values of the 
U, saturation, and gain are offset all from each other. So none of the values will overlay each other. So we have some seed values that we can change to further randomize the effect. And now let's just reset everything to default and make some very fine changes because on something like this, we don't really need major changes. So just a little bit, just to make it a little bit more random. And here we are, we have some slight variation on a piece by piece basis. Play around with the seed a little bit. Maybe I find something that I like a little bit better. You can always place your cursor inside of one of the input fields, hold down the mouse and just drag the, the mouse up or down, and you'll have finer control over your slider values. It's a very subtle change. So this is a look at the jitter color node and hope it's useful.